The gym can be a very intimidating place, especially if you're a beginner. You probably have no idea what to do or where to even go. I know I was like that when I first started. All I knew was that I wanted to work out. I had no idea how I was gonna do that though because I had a crippling sense of anxiety surrounding anything related to the gym. But now, the gym's like a second home to me. Let's talk about how exactly I managed to do that. But first, I really wanna address the idea that gym culture is toxic. I don't think gym culture is toxic at all. I think it's just the way that it's been portrayed on social media hasn't garnered the best reputation. And I'm really happy to report that in real life, most people in the gym are normal. I'm gonna be real with you. The scariest and most intimidating people in the gym are usually gonna be the nicest people. As a beginner, usually the only person that's gonna be mean to you is you. We can be really hard on ourselves, but it's important to remember that this is something new for you and this is the beginning of a journey. No one is expecting you to know everything. Everyone has been a beginner at some point. That means you're not the first person to feel lost or anxious. The gym is full of normal people like you and me that just want to be healthier and get more fit. That's it. Hopefully that alleviates uh, just a tiny bit of that anxiety. This is not a guide on how to work out. This is meant to be a comprehensive guide on every single thing you can expect leading up to the moment you're in the gym. And at the end, I'm going to tell you exactly how I overcame my anxiety with the gym. Of course, you can't go to the gym if you don't have a gym membership. So let's talk about the sign-up process. Most people start with commercial gyms because they're usually the largest and they're most abundant. Chances are there are several in your area, unless you live in like Antarctica or something. Actually, I don't know if Antarctica has any gyms. There's gonna be a ton to choose from. The larger ones are usually like LA Fitness, Crunch, and Planet Fitness. Those are just the ones that are near me. This could be different from region to region. Commercial gyms are usually larger in size, but also in population. So you can see a diverse group of people. You can see beginners, veterans, and a lot of people in between. Now, commercial gyms tend to be a little bit more affordable as well compared to smaller, more private gyms. Smaller, more private gyms are usually more specialized, so they charge a higher rate. Think fancy restaurant versus fast food. So do your research in your local area and find the one that best suits you. Now you can either sign up online for a lot of these places or go in person. If you go in person, chances are you can negotiate a little bit with the salesperson depending on the promotions that are, they're running at the moment. But if you don't want to do any negotiating, just sign up online. Keep it nice and simple. Now that you have your gym membership, you may or may not have been given a tour your very first day. But I'm going to go ahead and assume you have no idea how a gym is laid out at all. Since we're assuming you don't know how a gym is laid out, let's talk about it. When you first step foot into the gym, you're gonna scan in and you'll be greeted by the front desk staff. You should probably say hi, it's only polite. Then you'll see that the gym is divided into different sections depending on the type of exercise equipment. Now every gym layout is different, but the majority of them are gonna have the following. So you will see a section that's dedicated to just stretching. They're usually gonna be large black mats. They're gonna have foam rollers, bands, and all the fun stuff there. You can see a cardio section of all the cardio machines like treadmills, ellipticals, stair masters. There should be a machine section as well where the machines are dedicated to training specific muscle groups. For example, all the leg machines are gonna be all next to each other. All the tricep machines will be next to each other, biceps and so on and so forth. Then of course, you're gonna see the free weight section. That's where you're gonna find your dumbbells, your barbells, your benches, your squat racks and your deadlift platforms. If your gym is a bit fancier, you'll find things like a pool, sauna, basketball courts and a whole bunch of other gym amenities, but that's entirely different from gym to gym. Now here's a special piece of advice. If you want to avoid the largest possible crowd in the gym, do not go to the gym between the hours of 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. That is when everyone and their mom and their mom's mom goes to the gym. Now, personally, I can't speak for the 5 a.m. crew because I frankly cannot wake up that early. But when I was a beginner, I used to love going later at night at like 8 or 9 p.m. That way there wasn't a large crowd and I could take my time and I didn't have to wait for anyone to finish anything. I like to think that the gym has two seasons. From January to March, that's the absolute busiest season because that's when the New Year's resolutioners do their yearly migration. And from March onwards, only the strongest of the resolutioners survive and they become regulars. And of course, you're gonna be one of those regulars because you're watching this video and you're doing your research and prepping. So you got this. While we're on the topic of people, let's talk about the kind of people you're gonna encounter in the gym. You know those National Geographic videos where they're narrating a scene and they're describing individual creatures in their own individual habitats and all the little quirks? My brain automatically does that when I go to the gym and I just watch people. And of course the voice I hear is David Attenborough. Okay, here's the ecosystem of the gym. So you're gonna see staff. Staff is very self-explanatory. It's gonna be membership, front desk, personal trainers, cleaners, 
anyone who works at the gym is understaffed. One group you're gonna run into are the teenagers. Yep, they always, always travel in packs. Rarely are they ever solo. They do appear the most between the hours of 4 to 7 p.m. And oftentimes, because they travel in packs, they all do the exact same exercises. So it takes them forever to finish their workouts, which causes everyone else around them to wait. I'm not even kidding. I've seen a group of eight teenagers before, all on the bicep curl machine. They were there for an hour and a half before their moms picked them up. The cardio connoisseurs. Now these people only do cardio or abs. That's it. They live and die with cardio and abs. Now, they generally keep to themselves, so yeah, they're never gonna get in your way if you're doing everything else. Then you can run to the veterans or the more experienced people. These people look like they were chiseled by the gods themselves and look like they were born with a six pack. I can assure you they were not born that way. Okay, these are the people that usually work hard, keep to themselves, and they're always the nicest. They may look intimidating, but looks can be super deceiving, especially with these guys. I recommend you try to befriend one of them because their experience is invaluable in the gym, especially as a beginner. And the largest crowd by far is composed of beginners and casuals. These are people who are just looking to get fit. They're not looking to become jacked bodybuilders. They just are there to work out and improve their overall health. And you're probably going to be in that group. And those are going to be the main kinds of people you're going to experience. I noticed there's very, very few actually outwardly mean people in the gym. In all the years I've been training, I haven't experienced one moment where someone was genuinely mean to me in a gym setting. However, you will run into people who are inconsiderate. Inconsiderate people don't clean up after themselves, leave weights everywhere, and just are just kind of messy overall. These are the only people you're allowed to hate. We all hate them. Don't be messy. Now the moment you've been waiting for, let's talk about how to overcome that gym anxiety. The short answer is the more you go, the more comfortable you're gonna be. But let's go into some detail. When you're working out, however you choose to work out, you are gonna feel so self-conscious at first. You're gonna feel like everyone is staring at you and wondering what you're doing because everyone's gonna know that you have no idea what you're doing. Absolutely not true. No one cares what you're doing. No one even sees you in the gym, I promise you. People are so focused on themselves and what they're doing. You could be doing whatever you want in the gym and no one is gonna see. Okay, that was a bit of an exaggeration. Maybe not whatever you want, but for the most part, I promise you, people don't really care what you're doing in the gym. As long as you are not negatively affecting these people in any kind of way, no one is gonna react to anything you're doing. Everyone was new at some point and you're gonna make mistakes. That's totally okay. And I'll let you know right now, even as a trainer in the gym, I don't run up to random people and correct their form unless they're about to hurt themselves. That's the only difference. I let people do whatever they're gonna do. If it reassures you, most people in the gym do not know what they're even doing, okay? You're not the only one. As long as you're patient, you will get the results that you want, but it is gonna be a learning curve, so you need to be patient with yourself. Give yourself some grace. This is only the beginning. I mean, I used to Google how to do certain workouts and exercises in the middle of my workout. And sometimes my more experienced friends or more experienced members would help me out and I'd be super thankful. I want to let you know that the gym is one of those few places in the world that no matter what you do, if you did something in the gym, you have made progress. And it's always, always going to be a win every single time. We all train in our own ways. That's the beauty of the gym. You can literally do whatever you want. Okay, maybe you can't punch someone's grandma in the face. But what I'm trying to say is you have free will in the gym. You can train however you want, work on whatever body part you want, whenever you want. There is no such thing as a designated workout that everyone has to do. If you are respectful and you focus on yourself, no one's gonna pay attention to you and no one's gonna bother you at the gym. No one cares how big or how small you are because chances are someone in that gym has been in your exact position before. Most gyms are not full of social media influencers. You may run into some tripods and some of them here and there, but it's no big deal. Those people are the most focused on themselves. Trust me. Now I'm gonna let you know right now, your first few weeks are going to be nerve wracking. There's no sugarcoating it. But the sooner you take to heart the idea that no one cares about what you're doing, the better. I want you to take comfort in knowing that you are not the only beginner in the gym and you are not gonna be the last beginner in the gym and that most people around you have felt the exact same way you have before. I want you to focus on making the gym a part of your lifestyle, a non-negotiable part of your day and a part of your week. Most importantly, you should do activities and train in the way that you like. 
because the sooner you enjoy what you're doing and start looking forward to your workouts, the more comfortable you're gonna be. And trust me, when you start seeing that first inkling of progress, that is when the game changes completely. You're gonna be hooked and all that anxiety disappear. I also wanna say this, it's okay to not like going to the gym. Most people don't like the gym, but the ones that go, regardless of how they feel emotionally, are the ones that ultimately reach their goals. If you're starting in January, try to last past March. Then if you're starting after January, try to last three months. From my experience, that is usually a determining factor on whether someone is gonna stick with the gym or not. If you particularly have trouble going to the gym, try going with a friend or a family member. They could be more experienced or just as new as you, the buddy system. If you want a more guided and structured introduction to the gym, consider hiring a personal trainer. Now they aren't gonna be cheap, okay? This is for people with disposable income. I would not recommend this for everyone. If you have the money, I would highly suggest doing it because it's gonna get you jump started and it's gonna make you a lot more accountable. Just a quick little tip, I don't recommend you sign up with a trainer in commercial gyms. These people are generally not as qualified as you may think. I would do my research online if I were you but I definitely don't wanna to get too into the weeds of how to find a personal trainer. I really wanted to prepare you as much as I could and let you know exactly what you can expect in the gym. Hopefully this helped with some of that anxiety you may be feeling. I just wanna say good luck with everything. I believe in you and you got this.